All right, we're gonna go over the solutions to the extra questions given at the beginning of the real number line video. So if you've enjoyed the content and the videos have helped, you can join the channel as a member for either $2 Canadian a month or $5 a Canadian a month to support free education on YouTube through my channel. So if they've been helping, thank you very much for your contribution, comments, likes, and everything help a lot. Okay, let's get into the solution. So the first one was to test your understanding of these different sets of numbers. So I want you to give some examples of numbers that follow the certain properties. So A, I want you to tell me some integers that are not natural numbers. So remember, natural numbers start at one, two, three, and they go on forever. Integers are numbers that start like negative infinity, uh, then negative two, negative one, zero, one, and so on. So you can take any number, any whole number starting at zero, and any negative number that starts at negative one or less. So some examples of integers that are not natural could be zero, a negative six, could be negative 721, uh, could be negative 2.0 times 10 to the 65. So this would be a gigantically negative number, or I guess you would call it an incredibly small number. Okay, that one's not too bad. What about some numbers that are rational, but not integers? So rational numbers are numbers that can be written as fractions, and integers uh, are like complete numbers, so no decimal points. So we just need to pick some rational numbers that would have decimal points after. So have something like three halves, because this could be 1.5. Uh, we could have like negative 17 over three, or we could have negative 654 over uh, 211. So as long as there's some sort of fraction component and it can be written as a fraction, you have a rational number. Okay, C. I want integers that are also whole numbers. So remember, whole numbers, they start at 0, 1, 2, 3, 4, and so on. I'm going to put a comma there. <laughs> uh, so we just can't have any negative integers here, just the positive ones, or 0. So you could pick 0, you could pick 16, you could pick 27, you could pick 891. As long as there's no decimal point after it, and as long as it's not negative, then you have an integer number that is also whole. So hopefully these questions weren't too bad. Uh, these are the kind of things you see on assignments, not so much on exams. Okay, and here's just to test your number line ability. So I want to determine each is true or false. So let's just draw two number lines here just so we can plot these. Uh, okay, 3.1 is greater than 3.01. Okay, so if we plot this, uh, 3.1 could be like right here. So I have three of something and one tenths of something, uh, but 3.01 is slightly smaller than that. So 3.01 is 0 0.09 away from 3.1. So yes, this is a true statement because 3.1 is bigger than 3.01. Uh, if we were to plot these, then 3 would be like right there, and 4 would be somewhere over here, way to the right. Okay, this one. Negative 4.2 is less than negative 4.21. So I'm going to plot negative 4. Now, negative 4.2 would be 0.2 away, so that could be something like negative 4.2. Now, negative 4.21 well, this is negative 4.2 and a little bit more negative. So 0 0.01 more negative than negative 4.2. So this line might actually be kind of difficult to draw. It would be like right here, and this would be negative 4.21. So actually, this one happens to be false uh, because negative 4.21 is actually less than negative 4.2. I guess I got fancy technology now. I can just erase with a pen. There we go. Negative 4.21 is less than negative 4.2. So what you notice in this problem, which, by the way, in mathematics, it's always really good to try to learn something from problems, too, and not just do them, like, without really thinking about it. Uh, 
If we look at this in reverse, so if we think about 4.2 and 4.21, we find that 4.21 is greater than 4.2. So in the negative direction, when you reverse these, uh, you also, well, you also hold the same sort of relation here. So negative 4.21 is less than negative 4.2. Uh, and this is because if we think about it from a distance from zero, standpoint. So let me get rid of this number line and let's actually think about this from zero. Okay, so if we plot zero on the number line and then we plot 4.2 and 4.21, we notice that 4.2 is going to be closer to zero than 4.21. So in the negative direction, it is also going to be the case that negative 4.2 is going to be closer to zero than negative 4.21. So there's a symmetry going on. So 4.21 is more positive than 4.2. Negative 4.21 is more negative than negative 4.2. So the bigger number, ignoring the positive negative sign, is always going to be further away from zero than the smaller number, ignoring the positive or negative sign. Now this works when they're the same sign, when they're different signs, whatever. Uh, but that's just a little symmetry to find. Anyways, that's sort of off topic from the point of the question, but it's a nice little thing to talk about and to see and to uh, show visually. So, questions weren't too bad. Hopefully you got them right. And uh, if you do have any questions, leave them in the comments below and I will do my best to answer them.